Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's August 14th, 2018, and this is another episode of Ask Me Anything. First thing I'll start off with is, if you want to reach out to me and ask questions or, or leave comments, please do them in the video description here on YouTube. I discovered yesterday uh, there was a question for me that was posted on, on Twitter. Um, and I'm really terrible at social media. I really don't check that at all. Although, I'll say that every time I post a video, there is a tweet that goes out describing that I posted the video. That's an automated thing uh, as well. So today, this episode is, is an Ask Me Anything, and it has to do with hardening off or acclimating plants to the outside environment once we've started them indoors, typically. So this one's from Hound Life. Was hoping uh, Dr. Kevin P. Wallace could give me some assistance. I'm having a lot of trouble hardening off my plants lately. We're growing all of our fall stuff, but I can't keep them outside for more than a few hours before they wilt. I've been trying to add an hour or so every day. Um, <clears throat> I think I'll start this off by just mentioning first that everything in life is dependent upon, especially su success or failure, is dependent on multiple factors, multiple elements, and their interdependency. So it's multifactorial and there's these interdependencies between these factors. And what I'm going to do is at least mention some of these factors uh, that we need to be thinking about or that I think is advisable to be thinking about when we're trying to be successful with any transition phase, when we're, when we're going into a, uh, into a process. And this is a design system. So you're designing a system where you can have optimized success and minimize the detrimental effects of the various variables as well. And so most people will talk about, well, over a seven to 10 day period, taking those seedlings and gradually exposing them to the elements outside, the amount of solar exposure, the amount of uh, uh, wind exposure uh, and so on. And, and I'd say that that advice is good advice, it's just very minimal. It's, it's like, you know, like when I was a kid, everybody should just go ahead and go to college, get a degree, and then be successful in life. <laughs> well, it's, there's, there's a bit more involved in that. Uh, so what are some of those variables? Uh, one thing I'll do is I'll link, I'll place a link to my vacuum seeder and seed starting couple of videos in the upper right hand corner so that you can go back and see how I'm starting some things during the winter months. Uh, so what are what are some of the variables? Uh, so when we're I guess what, I, what I'll do is I'll start off with some some of the terms that I think we we need to, the factors which are terms uh, that we need to be uh, thinking about. So we're starting with seeds and the very first thing during the development of a seed is the seed, when it, when it starts to germinate, it sends down a root. And so that happens before we even see a stem start and starting to emerge from the surface of the soil. So that root's really important. And then we see that stem starting to, to uh, emerge, and then we see the first two leaves, and those are cotyledons. And they could be dicots, like your brassicas, and so many of the different plants that we have, or it could be monocots, like your grasses and your corn, and all, a sing single seed leaf emerging. But I could see in the photos that Hound Life uh, showed that there were at least some brassicas there as well. And those first cotyledons are a little bit, oh, opposing heart-shaped leaves uh, of the stem. And those are different than true leaves. Those true leaves will look a little bit more like what that plant is going to ultimately look like in the future. Those are that second set of leaves. Uh, so we see, you know, we have that seed, it develops a root, then we get a stem, then we get the cotyledons, the first set of leaves, and then we get the first true leaves, which are the second set of leaves, and then we get a third set of leaves, uh, which is the second set of, uh, the, the second um, uh, permanent set of leaves. Uh, we shouldn't say permanent, but they're the more of the mature leaves. And timing is everything for when we're setting plants outside. So the, the I never 
start if I've started seedlings indoors, I never put them out when they just have the cotyledons. I always wait until we have the, the first set of true leaves or the second set of true leaves, the second and third set of leaves that you see. I hope that makes sense. So because the developmental um, process involves many different factors. For example, there's there are uh, there are plant hormones that communicate throughout the plant system and through uh, with throughout the whole plant. So, so some of those plant hormones are the auxins, and and I won't go into detail with any of these these. I've gone into it in other videos in the past, but uh, like the auxins, uh, the, the gibberellins, the cytokinins, the ethylene, the um, ABA, the abscisic acid. Uh, these all uh, help the plant structures respond appropriately to environmental stimuli uh, that they're exposed to. And so some hormones get stimulated to suppress uh, uh, elongation or, or maturation of various tissues, and some of them enhance elongation or, you know, reaching for the sun, moving to more towards light and all. And I'm not going to go into each one of those plant hormones. And they, those plant hormones move through the circulatory system predominantly and then through the tissue systems as well. But we, we talk about two different components of the circulatory system. The xylem, which takes water and nutrients, minerals, from the root structures and brings them up through the through the various stems, the main stem included, to the leaves, and then photosynthesis through the through the development of chloroplasts with chlorophyll, uh, ultimately do the photosynthesis and then develop those uh, sugars and uh, transpiration happens where w water. Uh, is, uh, is eliminated to the atmosphere through the leaf structure as well, and CO2 is converted to the carbohydrates, and that gets circulated down to the stem and the rest of the plant as it's de developing and, and uh, maturing as, as a process, and it goes down to the root structures as well. And it isn't just a simple root that goes down from that seed. Uh, yes, that does happen initially, but there's all these root developments that happen in, in, in almost a mirror image to what you see on the top of the plant, but it develops uh, probably before the, what you see on the surface of, of the soil, above the surface of the soil. So we have all these little root hairs that develop that are, that are very important for the exchange. And there's a strengthening and there, the structural integrity of the plant becomes more stable as time goes on. And this is all an integration to the circulatory system and the hormone forms of communication throughout the plant. And I'm not trying to make this uh, overly complex and be confusing what I want to do is create an awareness of there are all of these different factors that interplay and interact and that are very interdependent upon each other as a result. So there are ways of mitigating and reducing uh, the risks and that's where the hardening off process begins. But before I talk about all of the hardening off process, like so many of the plants that we, if we have the beds available, when it's not super cold, even during a drought, if you have the means to water, direct seeding would be preferable in many of these, these plants. So just getting them right into the ground, since the soil temperature is warm enough, it's not flooded. Uh, so that if your bed is ready for them, then that's ideal. Now, there may be the situation where the beds already have a whole bunch of plants in them that you're, you haven't harvested yet, but you need to get these seedlings started so that once you harvest the other plants that are in the beds and you prep the bed, you want to have those plants ready to transplant into that bed. So that's a good reason for starting all of the seeds in the in the in like the 72 cell trays that I think that you use on life. And uh, <clears throat> but even if you've pulled all of those plants out of the garden bed, sometimes it's 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 too early if you've started them under grow lights indoors or in a windowsill 
and you're and they're just at that that uh, cotyledon stage it's pr in my opinion it's probably too early to just do the oh one hour outside and then inside and all without really assessing the circumstances uh, more critically so you know if I were trying to so first thing is I would not start the either I would start the seedling trays outdoors because when those cotyledons first emerge and they're exposed to the full sun exposure from early morning hours through the midday and then through the strong westerly evening uh, lights they're already self uh, uh self acclimating to the environmental circumstances we just have to make sure that we're watering them adequately and all and that we're we're meeting their needs nutritionally so we're not letting birds come down and pick at them the chickens aren't scratching at them uh you know the pests aren't getting to them and and we're, we're, we've got the nutrients and the adequate water so either direct seeding or starting in seed trays outside is preferable to tr starting them inside and then moving them outside too early in their developmental stages. These are all my opinions, by the way. And it's starting to rain, and I didn't mention it here because I, I've tried shooting this video a couple times. We got rain last night, and we're getting some rain right now, which is awesome. And I've got the little umbrella up over here, so I'll, I'm going a bit longer. So starting the direct seeding is preferable if the environmental conditions are ready and uh, are right meaning it's it's no longer in the cold early springs spring or and we have the beds ready and if we don't have the beds ready and environmental conditions are okay then starting them in, in the seed starting trays actually outside or at least being much more exposed putting little little uh like uh like i made those little uh, low tunnels in the past you can use a shade cloth you can put a little uh, cover over them over the nighttime if there's ex storms expected and so on and so forth. So that would be the second preferential way of, of developing them. And the third is if we're growing them indoors, one, we have to wait until the plant is mature enough. We really want that, f that first set of true leaves at least minimally and preferably that second set of true leaves as well. Now let's say you've done all this and you start moving them outdoors well, you may not get to them. Uh, the, the amount of evaporation or the amount of heat uh, and humidity is, is, is allowing the, the soil to become dried out. So if you water them and you just water them once, and so when I water my, my seedling trays when they're out, outside, when I'm uh, hardening them off, uh, I water them twice within a 15 minute period. If the soil surface is crusty, the water may sit on the surface of it and then go around the soil block itself within the soil uh, uh, depression in the, in the, that holds the soil and not really get absorbed so that the full root surface, all those little root hairs can actually get saturated. So I water it first and that softens up or, or uh, hydrates that crusty layer which allows the rest of the soil to absorb it when I come back 15 minutes later. So I start at one end, go all the way around, and then come back around again. So that's way. And it's starting to rain a little bit heavier, so I think I'm going to take the camera inside before it gets wet here at all. Um, I, I didn't want to overwhelm with some of the terms that I've used, but those are some terms that you can use to look up and do further research. And this winter, if there's questions or comments about these topics, I'd be happy to go in greater detail on the plant hormones and plant anatomy, uh, growth and development, both two different uh, aspects of, of uh, creating a living entity, whether it's a plant or an animal. So, I hope you found this video of value. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it with your friends. Uh, and by all means, have a super fantastic day. And enjoy the rain if it's raining someplace and not flooding your location. Take care, folks. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.